Go get that record. Boy, hey, I come straight in here. Go get that record. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Check that record out. I know you've seen the video. Yeah. You know I got you, Holmes. Yeah. We're going to get to it, man. I'm letting some people get off in here, right? I'm, uh, I'm pulling up. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know why I got these hoes. I don't, I don't ever use them. Yeah, motherfucker said, why you don't drink out of glass? For what? Could you imagine us in the hood drinking out of glasses? Nigga, I ain't drink out no motherfucking glass. Yeah. Let some people get off in here. Who out there doing what? Who out there eating motherfucking ball eggs and shit? You know what I'm saying? I've been out there hooping with my kids. Shooting basketball and shit. Chopping it up with them. About peer pressure and life. Very necessary. <clears throat> Very necessary these days, man. Go get that record. Go get that record. You know what I'm saying? The video been out, but the but the audio was never available. Go to my band camp and get that record. <clears throat> yeah. Chad is here so them numbers can go up. And we gonna get off into it. All you gotta do. Yeah. 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 What they at? Who out there doing what? Because we about to get into it. We, we about to chop it up. I don't, I don't want you to miss this. Yeah. I know y'all enjoying y'all family. I know y'all barbecuing and eating seafood, you know what I mean? We did a little bit of that, a little bit of this and that, this and that, but I ain't too big on it right now. I ain't too big on it right now. I got to get back. I got to get back in, in, in grind mode, heavy grind mode, you know what I'm saying? I got to get back in heavy grind mode. Yeah. Who out there? Uh uh, I ain't late. <laughs> I ain't said what time I was going on. I told y'all about to talk about it. Wasn't no specific time. But I'm gonna get into it, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get straight into it. Let me, let me kill this record. Yeah, that's that Kodak <clears throat> featuring the pimp. And uh, I, ain't, I ain't on them fathers today. I ain't on them fathers today. But I'm still on that King Cobra. I'm still on that Cobra, yeah. I ain't on them fathers today because uh, I'm, finna, I'm finna turn down. I'm finna turn down my collar. And, and, and get back on the grindstone heavy. You know what I mean? I've been tripping these past few weeks. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been, I've been tripping. So I'm finna go on turn up a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. But whoever in here right now, I'm finna go and give it to you. So we can keep on moving this shit. And do what we got to do during the day. So basically, man. When I was in between the ages. Uh, 12, 13. I was exposed already to uh, the epidemic that had hit our city. Crack cocaine, you know what I mean? And uh, it was fortunate that I was exposed to crack cocaine at that time, 12, 13, 6th, 7th grade. And I know that sound awkward to say it was it was fortunate I was fortunate to be exposed to it but I'll tell you why you know what I mean uh, let's say a child who never got to witness what crack cocaine did to other individuals he would be blindsided you know what I mean so fortunate, fortunately, at the age 12, 13, 6th, 7th grade, in between that time, I was able to see the epidemic in its, in its full stride in the hood. Uh, what it was doing to, 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 to individuals who was, you know, smoking it, what it was doing to individuals who was selling it. You know what I mean? I, I, I had a good good understanding about what it was and what it was about and what it was possible of, of what it was capable of making people do. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> we're going to jump to speed in between that age. I had, uh, different little girls that wanted to hang out with me and shit. And so my brothers had some apartments in, in Villa, Maine. And I used to, Ask my mama, could I go over there and hang out so I could have kind of free reign to do what I wanted to do? Because my big brothers wasn't going to, you know, tell me, don't do this or don't do that. So one day I'm over at Big Bro House. Uh, I, just, I just got through kicking in with one of my little chicks. And Big Bro tripping. You know what I'm saying? He, and that's, that's what's terrible about this story. And some people uh, close to me may feel like I shouldn't tell this story, but it's my truth, you know what I mean? And I wanna get it out there because there's a lesson in the story and we gotta make sure that this shit ain't happening to our youth because that shit could have went another way. But long story short, my brother, you know, he passed away, but he was addicted to crack cocaine, you know what I mean? And I always was riding his back like, hey, man, that shit, man, leave that shit alone. Like, but I'm just a little kid trying to voice my opinion to him. And uh, he about eight years older than me. So one day I'm at his crib. And like I said, my little company had left and I'm still hanging out at his crib. It's just me and him. And so he had one restroom and he kept. He kept going to the restroom, standing in that bitch for like an hour, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I got to use the restroom. So I'm like, say, man, let a nigga use the restroom, man. Get off the bullshit, this and that, this and that. And so he in there doing whatever the fuck he doing. And I'm like, I know what your ass in there doing. Uh, man, get off the bullshit and, and, and let me use the restroom. So I go ahead. He let me in. I use the restroom. Then after I get through he come in the restroom with me and he like, he not looking like himself. He got this real goofy ass look on his face and showing his teeth and just look real conniving. You know what I'm saying? And he got this, this, this straight shooter in his hand. Uh, niggas from my area and, and niggas from, you know what I'm saying? My day and age, they know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what a straight shooter is, I'm shooting it straight. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know what it is. But everybody pretty much know what a straight shooter is. So he got this straight shooter in his hand. 
and I think he probably made it out of an antenna. I don't know what it was. But he got this straight shooter in his hand and he keep flickering this lighter. And mind you, this is, this is my big brother. Not my oldest brother, but one of my older brothers. And he go to telling me about how good crack is. You know what I mean? He go to telling me, he said, he trying to sell me on it. Like he, man, this shit, man, look, man, this shit, this and that, this and that. And mind you, like I said, I'm 12, 13, in between six and seven grade. But it was fortunate that I'd already seen, you know what I'm saying, what was up with that epidemic. But I didn't know what was about to happen, you know what I'm saying, right then and there. I was, I was kind of like, what's going on? Just observing. And so as he's selling me on the idea that, man, this shit good, man. You just, you got to try it, man. Like I'm telling you, man, just just get a little hit, man. Just just hit this bitch. And, and I'm telling him like, Man, you tripping. I don't I, I don't want none of that shit. Nah, I'm I'm I don't want none of that. And so he kind of blocking the way to get out of the restroom. And I'm not trying to just blow past him, but I'm just voicing my opinion, letting him know, nah, I, I don't want none of that. You know what I'm saying? Look how that shit got you acting. Why would you want me to try that shit? And so he just kind of like, man, look, the shit good, man. Just just get a little hit of it. And he and he hand me the pipe. And so while he handed me the pipe, he breaking my heart. You know what I'm saying? He he really, he really crushing me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I love my big brother, but I don't understand why in the fuck would he want me to try this dumb ass shit. So when he handed me the pipe, I already had decided <clears throat> what I was going to do. I had kind of took in a breath. And so when I was going to put the pipe to my mouth, I was going to blow that breath outward. You know what I mean? And so he put the pipe in my mouth and then he and he and he lit it. And I looked up at him and when he lit that hoe, I just I blew that bitch forward. And you could see the flame, you know what I'm saying, coming coming off the brillo, blazing whatever it is in the front, just blazing that hoe through. And he jacked it out my out my mouth and like, man, what you doing, man? What you doing? And I'm like, man, what the fuck wrong with you? I say, nigga. I'm gonna tell my motherfucking mama, you on some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I knew it was like some real devastating information that I was gonna give my mama. And I didn't know how she was gonna react to it. I, I really wanted her to, to get on his ass because that was a, a, a very dangerous move he pulled to, to, to want me to smoke that shit at 12, 13. Like I could have, think if I was like, you know, stupid as fuck and, and would have went on and inhaled that shit. That shit would have changed my life. You know what I mean? Because at that age, you ain't got no motherfucking control over no man-made chemical like that that's designed to, uh, you know, have your ass addicted. But when I told her, I don't think she understand understood, like, how dangerous it was of the move he pulled. Uh, she went off on him, you know what I'm saying? She, she cursed him out and Told him he was wrong, this and that, this and that. But I felt like that just, that was just kind of like an understatement for, for the actions that he pulled. And so I kind of gave him a little distance and understood that something going on mentally with him that he would corrupt me like that. But don't get me wrong, that was my brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't lose no love for him. I just I just understood that mentally he was on some, some dumb ass shit. You know what I mean? I understood that even though I was 12 and uh, 12 or 13, I understood that I had to stand on my own and make decisions for myself because looking to him for leadership or guidance, he lead me down the goddamn toilet. Like he he lead me down a drain. So I didn't I stopped looking to him for any kind of uh, inspiration, leadership or guidance. I started looking at him as what not to do in life. You know what I mean? So later on in life, um, I get tricked into smoking crack. This this another nigga that's close to me. You know, he, he a bit older than me. And uh, if you see this, my nigga, 
you know you was wrong in the motherfucker. But like I say, it's fortunate that I had experienced that shit in the streets and I understood what was popping with it. But he slipped it on me. Sort of like what DMX was talking about because me and me and, me and my dude, uh, he was my kinfolk. We used to run together all the time, you know what I'm saying? And we was, we was shooting basketball at this one park and just sitting on the grass, taking a break or whatever. He always fired up a new port, this and that, this and that. But I'm kind of laid back in the grass, not paying attention. And he over there doctoring up the new port or whatever. And uh, we chilling and shit. And he's smoking the square. And then he's like, you want to hit the square? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'll shot you or whatever. So he hand me the square, but the square got a little bit more on it. You know what I mean? Like as I'm smoking it, I'm like, this ain't no regular motherfucking cigarette. You know what I'm saying? So I asked him like, what the fuck is you doing? What is this? He like, oh nigga, <laughs> that's a cigamo. I go off on him. Man, what the fuck you think I want to smoke? You know what I'm saying? I'm about, I'm about 14 at this time. Like, what you think I want to smoke some motherfucking crack in, 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 in a cigarette? Like, like, why would you think I want to smoke this shit? I don't want this shit. You know what I'm saying? But after I smoked it, we was chilling and we were kind of, you know, arguing a little bit. And he started telling me about uh, how they normally put it in the weed as a primo. And by this time, I'm already understanding that niggas I know smoke mold, but I ain't I ain't never I ain't never wanted to indulge in that. And so he said, I'ma roll up a mo. Try it like that. My dumb ass say, yeah, okay. So he sprinkled the weed, wrap wap wap wap, crush, and you know, night passed me that. Unfortunately, I liked that. That that was a that was a high that I knew you better not fall in love with this here because this shit on some fly shit, but it's really just a motherfucking uh uh crack with a little grass sprinkled around it. You really smoking crack, you know what I mean? So he and I didn't continue uh doing that on a consistent basis. I pretty much was like, I'ma stay away from that shit. Now jump to speed. I get to high school, but fortunately, again, I'm already kind of well versed in crack, you know what I'm saying, just straight, and primos and sigamos. So, unfortunately, me and my peers, we would, you know, pass around a couple of primos, fucking with that, and I did that probably about five to seven times. But I remember being somewhere with a bunch of uh, prominent young individuals as like myself, had no business fucking with that shit. And I remember looking at these cats and thinking to myself, this is my last time fucking with this shit. You know what I mean? Because we playing with it, but this shit taking certain niggas under. You know what I mean? And so... We had a good time and we did what it do. But I remember that day, I'm like, I, I'm starting to really like it. And so I decided that day, ne never no more. I don't care who it is talking about, hey, let's, let's boom, boom, boom. And uh, we used to say, man, it's time to crush one. And that was, that was our little fly way of saying we were gonna go smoke a Primo, but that day at that gathering, um, I really realized, nigga, you smoking crack. You smoke crack, don't you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so that day I decided never uh, never again would I do that shit. And God gave me enough mental and, and, and concern and discernment about myself that my decision to never do it again after that day was the last time I did it. But that shit could have went either way, any any which way, because that's a very strong drug. And, and as you hear 
DMX, you know, when he said dude slipped it on him, he said that day he created a monster. I really, I really felt that man when he said that. Because here's somebody that's your crimey, that you that you doing shit with, that you admire and you look up to, and you doing music with him, you hanging out with the nigga, and this is the play, this is what he do. You kind of feeling like if you stop fucking with him, you won't have access to, you know, the shit you do with him, but at the same time, he he giving you something to destroy you. But as a young individual, you ain't got all them thoughts right then. You ain't you ain't able to put all that together right then and now. You just know the shit wrong. But one too many times you go to you go to liking that shit because it's 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 addictive chemicals in there to to make you an addict. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is, but whatever they however they designed it. Whatever in there is supposed to make you an addict. You know what I mean? It take a real strong uh, individual, strong constitution, strong mind to to kick that shit. But I know I know a, a great bit of individuals that that was stone cold addicted to that shit in the nineties that could have wore the the title as a crackhead that kicked that shit. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna put nobody business out there because that's their own personal business. But some people very close to me, you know what I'm saying? They 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 put their foot down and said, "Nah, no more. This shit ain't this shit ain't finna take me under." You know what I mean? But definitely, right now, man, we gotta talk to our children, um, the youth that's around us. And we got to get to the bottom of how they view the world through their eyes, through their experiences, through their ears. What are they, what are they absorbing? Because when I tell you we were going through some shit back in those days, uh, man, these kids, these kids are being exposed to everything all at one time. Bam! It's all here. At, right at their fingertips. Everything. You know what I mean? We had it more, more physically in the streets, but it's right at their fingertips on this net and on this web. The, 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 the knowledge of, 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 of just corruption, the knowledge of, of good, but what's more popular to them is most of the time the negativity. And especially if they got little little friends around them, like man, they got kids in in middle school going to school vaping, going to school with weapons. Like, you know, it, this shit is really turned up right now. So we really got we really got to get next to the youth and 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 and, and put it in their ear and let them know, hey man, do not be involved, do not be persuaded, do not think it's cool. To, to try anything that's going to destroy you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how cool the nigga in school look, how popular he look, his end result is, he going to be a dusty motherfucker at the end of the day and ain't nobody going to want to fuck with him because he, he going to be out there addicted to that shit and he just trying to drag somebody along with him. You know what I mean? Right now he's being taken care of by his parents. So he look, he look clean. He look good. But... After he ain't got that support system no more, and he get he get out there in them streets and, and, and them them streets fuck him in his ass real good, you know what I'm saying? He gonna be looking like a, a, a dust bunny out there. So we gotta let these kids know: do not follow that popular shit. Do not follow that old oh he he cool man. Fuck being cool. Follow the motherfucking nerds. Follow them niggas that's. That's getting good grades in school. You know, I was deemed least likely to succeed. You don't want to follow me. <laughs> you ain't want to follow me, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the niggas that follow me, hey man, I I'm glad y'all niggas shook back because I wasn't leave I wasn't leave y'all nowhere back then. I was just a big cool nigga, but I wasn't cool, my nigga. I was on some foolish shit. You know what I'm saying? 
we had a little clique called the Winter Circle. And every nigga part of that Winter Circle, they already know what it was. It wasn't nothing but the losers, count, the losers Corner. The Winter Circle was really the Losers Corner, you know? But it is what it is. We made it through that God good. Took us through that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my partners, they've they been sober for 10, 15 years. And salute to y'all, man, because nigga wasn't leading y'all nowhere. But yeah, man, I, I smoke me some dope, man. I, I smoke me some crack. Yeah, I smoke crack. Ain't no shame in my motherfucking game. Cause uh, I knew not to, I knew not to continue down that road. I knew that road would have would have took me and, and and twisted me and turned me into like DMX said a monster. And uh, in God plan, my, and I hope old boy, OG shake back. You know what I'm saying, and, and, and can get his life right, and, and go when it's when it's his time. You know what I'm saying, not not nothing premature like that. Yeah, that's my little spiel with it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate whoever tuned in. Uh, I ain't got nothing else to say about that. <coughs> I gave, I gave, I gave you my, I gave you my spiel on it. You dig? Who out there doing what? What we talking about? We ain't talking about nothing. We gon' uh. This a dope ass record. I'm uh. That's that AD Green, but this one I gotta finish. It's unreleased too. This the beat. Check that out. <laughs> Bitch called Fire. Let me see. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I'm glad. I'm glad I ain't. I'm glad I ain't hit that shooter, man. Hey, that, that title real, my nigga. That title real shit. Check that out. That bitch called Fire. I need a break. How much want? I don't. In God, test my faith. I lost a. And I lost my. One not coming back in one. In the world. Hey, man. That bitch cold. Only thing I gotta do. I had a couple people demo the hook. But it's one of them type of situations like Candy Call. That hook ain't right, it can't leave. If that hook ain't right, it can't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? It's that other one. It's a bad motherfucker. I let y'all hear that there the other night. Everything done on that one. I just gotta go to the studio and drop it. Check it, that bitch groovy. Yeah. Yeah, I smoke crack. <laughs> nah, it ain't it ain't nothing to be sad about because God gave me the the strength and the understanding at a young age to know how to say no and, and, and mean it. You know what I'm saying? And don't just want to fit in. Let me see how I hit that rep. See how I hit that round. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm gonna hit that hole a little bit. 
Y'all gotta forgive me, I ain't pulled it out in a minute, but I'm, I'm gonna hit that hole a bit. You like it when I bend your ass over and I fuck it. I love it when you gon' take control and you suck it. Girl, we meant to be, we on that freaky ass shit. And still to this day, you love it when I call you bitch. Your ass over and I fuck it. I love it when you gon' take control and you suck it. Girl, we meant to be, we on that freaky ass shit. And still to this day, you love it when I... It's been a lot of years and a lot hasn't changed All pussy ain't the same I'm a Mac up in this game Yeah, I'm back up in this thing With a brand new approach Exotic diamonds on my hand Around my throat, you know what I'm saying? But that's about it I can't, I can't be getting too deep off into that You know what I'm saying? That game is to be sold, man Yeah Hey, but yeah, that was, that was the topic of what was going on I'm gonna go and find this it's candy cars and uh we're gonna go and get out of here. I'll be back. Like, like Arno say, I'll be back. I don't know when, because I'm finna jump on the grind heavy, man. That money out there. So I'ma quit pussyfooting and tighten up my motherfucking rebox. <laughs> go get that shit. Don't smoke no crack. <laughs>